Today we'll discuss turning data into information with workbenches and data views, and we'll take a look at the workbench suite for SightLine. Some of you may already know today's presenter. It's Warren Smith. Warren has been with Godlin and previously with Infor for nine years, and he brings over 25 years of senior leadership in the industry. Uh, folks, at the end of Warren's presentation, we're going to take some time for Q&A. During the presentation, all attendees are going to be muted but you'll still have the ability to submit your questions through the chat panel, which is over on your right. Uh, so please submit those as we go along, and then I'll read those off at the end for Warren to address. Uh, at that, I'd like to turn this over to Warren. Joe, thank you very much, and good morning, everyone, and good afternoon. Uh, one of my most favorite uh, areas of, of Sightline here is the, uh, is the use of, of its data analysis tools and its ability to get data out of systems. You know, this has really changed over the years that uh, ERP systems, as uh, maybe some of you may know, maybe you're uh, running some older software or, uh, let's say, Sightline without some of the, uh, the latest and greatest reporting tools, that, you know, it's maybe not as easy to get data out of that system as you would like. You'd like to be able to really start, uh, uh, you know, getting the payback from putting all that information in because we know that ERP systems consume, uh, can consume and eat data uh, at a tremendous rate. You can put a lot of information in. Well, the key is to really starting to get information out of those systems is where the payback of, uh, of ERP systems is. So that's what we're really going to be covering today is the use of the uh, workbench tools and data views. Data views are a component of the workbench suite. And these are really going to present that information out to you in the system. So today, what we're going to cover is, you know, let's take a look at it. You know, it, it is truly all about the data. What are you doing with it? Uh, taking a look at some of the issues you've got today, and hopefully that you're going to be able to relate to some of this information. Being able to manage the business uh, using the workbenches and the data views. Uh, we're also then going to cover some of the uh, advanced uses of data views, things like custom columns and formulas. And then uh, we'll wrap it up with your uh, questions and answers at that point. So, you know, a friend of mine used to say, and he was in the, happened to be in the automotive aftermarket, he said, you know, it's all about the data. Uh, he was right. The fact is, it is all about the data. If you take a look at it, you know, where is it? You know, what am, where is the data? Uh, we, hopefully, it's all in one system, and hopefully that you're using Sightline to maintain all of that data, and you've got a single system of truth. You know, how can you get to it? Is it easy to get to? Or do you have to have complex reports that have been written? And those complex reports often take time to make changes uh, where they're going. You know, what can we do with the data? You know, is it meaningful? Uh, is it the right data? Things to look at there. How good is it? Is it real? Is it accurate? You know, if you've been using a good system like Sightline, you know that the data, it has uh, integrity, it has accuracy, and it's in real time. Where does it end up? This is one of the most critical things. Where does your end up? Do you know where your data is tonight, as I like to say? Because oftentimes, uh, you may not, and it may surprise you of where has your data gone? Where has it been copied off to? Do you have the controls? And the fact is, what does it all mean when it comes down to it? Well, I like to say it's more than just about the data. It's all about the information. Because really taking a look at, you know, what is information, if we look at a hierarchy, data is the most foundational piece of, 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 inf uh, of, the, uh, of the process here. Data, uh, collection of, uh, of numbers. It doesn't become information until we've started to take a look at it and do the analysis. Being able to trust that data, being able to have it in a timely and accurate fashion, Sightline runs in a real-time environment. Let's make sure that we're looking at the data in a real-time environment. We also want to start taking a look at that data in context. You know, a piece of a single point of data doesn't give you any reference to what was what is the surrounding information or surrounding data points that lead you to uh, making it into context at that point. And of course, how easy is it to anal uh, to analyze? Uh, you want to be able to really start having that information uh, flexible into the way you think, into the way the business changes as we go, go forward. And then we have to take a look at this and make sure it's consistent and repeatable. We want to be able to start looking at that data over time, uh, being able to uh, turn that into knowledge so we can start seeing trends, so we can start seeing where we were, for example, four or five years ago. 
where are we going to predict where we're going to be in the future? So being able to have consistent information over time to give us that knowledge, and ultimately when we apply the human characteristics to it, that gives us the wisdom at the top. So what we find is oftentimes companies uh, and perhaps maybe you will see yourself in this. You're really looking in the rearview mirror, uh, looking at old information or looking at old data. Therefore, it becomes old information. And how old is that data? Uh, if your production uh, information or production data is all real time coming off the shop floor, well, that's great. But let's make sure that the analysis is being done in real time as well. So uh, there's no point in taking a look at uh, waiting for a weekly report to come out, or perhaps it's a monthly report, because definitely that is the rearview mirror. And uh, as you can see, things are closer than they appear. And really what you'd like to do is in most, most modern systems today is let's start driving the business, or flying the business perhaps, using a little better uh, analogy here, flying the business with our heads up, because things are changing so quickly that we want to be able to keep our keep absolutely looking forward, being able to keep our, our eye on the target, and being able to see almost like in that heads-up display in the aircraft in the cockpit, uh, being able to see in the best way possible as we go forward. Now, I will bet an awful lot of you use Excel for data analysis. Well, you know, Excel is extremely powerful. You can create formulas, you can move information in, you can create pivot tables, uh, tremendous amount of analysis capability. But you know, it's kind of downside. First of all, Excel is not a database. It is a spreadsheet. People like to use it as a database, you know, and it can access data from a database. But the fact is, how timely is it? Because oftentimes, the way the data got into Excel was an export from a system of record like Sightline. So you export the data, you do the analysis, and where does it go? Where did that spreadsheet end up? Did it get emailed to someone? Did it leave the organization? Did it end up in the wrong hands? Who manipulated it? Is there a way to really control the information? Or uh, is, uh, you know, two versions of the truth, three versions of the truth, how many versions of the truth? And if you've ever gone through a uh, sales and operations planning meeting on a Monday morning, and uh, two or three people walk in with their Excel spreadsheets, supposedly with the same data, but they have different results, often you times you'll look at that and say, well, wait a minute, what version of the truth are we working on? And can you reproduce it over time? Because it's not controlled, that there isn't really a control mechanism. As people leave the organization, the person that created the Excel spreadsheet, that methodology, that thought process leaves oftentimes with them, and what they leave behind is perhaps a, a disjoint methodology uh, at that point of using Excel. Don't get me wrong, Excel is a great tool, but let's make sure we're using it in the right, uh, again, maybe perhaps the right context. So let's take a look at what workbenches and data views can do, giving us a lot of that same functionality and that same flexibility that you gain with Excel, but taking away all those negatives that we've seen. First of all, the positives. Let's take a look at the positives of using workbenches and data views versus Excel and using this within Sightline. Well, first of all, workbenches and data views are native to Sightline. It's embedded with the, it's embedded code. It's going against the same data within Sightline. Being able to look at that data in real time, so there is no time delay. Got that heads up uh, view of exactly what's going on information on the shop floor being reported, customer orders coming in, shipments going out, the data view is all in real time. If you're familiar with the intelligent data objects that are in Sightline, which is how your forms are uh, created, the data that goes into all of the forms, the data views can use those same, or it does use those same uh, intelligent data objects. So for example, if you happen to be looking at a form and there is specific data on a form, that same information is available in the data view with the same name. So you're really not having to re-engineer a separate reporting system. This is the native reporting system that really uh, the same data drives the forms. It's also controlled by Sightline security. So if you've created a security model to know where your data is tonight, you're going to be able to have that. 
Again, same system of record and truth for all users. Everybody's going to show up at the sales and operations planning Monday morning meeting over their cup of coffee, and hopefully they're all going to agree on the data. They're going to agree on the information. Now, they may still not agree on the approach on how you're going to fix the situation, but at least the data is going to be all the same. And data views can be created by person, group, or the whole organization. So you have this control. Even if an individual leaves, you've still got those data views as part of the system. People have the ability to go back through and hand off as uh, uh, people change roles in the organization and maintain that knowledge uh, over time. And again, exportable with control, making sure that you know exactly where the data goes. So you know what? Let's do this. Let's jump into the software right now and actually see what I'm talking about within the workbenches and data views. First part of the workbenches that comes up, I like to look at is many of the customer service home pages or many of the other home pages that are business role specific. So really giving you that heads up display, you walk in the morning, you pull up the, you have the cup of coffee and be able to see exactly the, uh, the information that uh, you need to see about the business. And this is all part of the workbenches and all this in these tools. So being able to take a look at the dashboard, being able to take a look at, for example, some, some critical numbers in some dashboards, and being able to drill down very quickly using the power of the data views, because these are exactly the drill downs are set up as data views, being able to see exactly what the situation was. For example, being able to take a look at, and very quickly sorting just like Excel, being able to take a look at my items, being able to take a look at critical information, again, right from that, uh, that chart that I was looking at there. Now, what we can do here, too, is being able to take a look at this large amount of data. There's a number of things that we can change as well. For example, we can start taking a look at choosing the columns that we want. So we're starting to now personalize this information. And again, being able to personalize this just for me as an individual user, perhaps it's for my work group, customer service, or perhaps it's for the whole organization. But being able to start taking a look at what columns that we're going to present on this pre-built data view. Being able to take a look at various other optional information. So for example, maybe we want to start taking a look at this and do some grouping by customers. So now we've taken this and we've done some grouping by our specific customer. Being able to take a look at what's going on for a particular customer and what a particular order might be. So being able to start doing some of this a detailed analysis at this point. Being able to start taking a look at other information such as uh, being able to put some filters in place. Being able to do some summations. So very quickly being able to add a sum to a column. Being able to do filtering for example. Being able to for example filter on a particular item. So for example, if we just want to see a single item, we've now filtered on that particular item. And by the way, those filters work for, especially for example, by dates. And the date functionality by filtering breaks it down by day, month, and all the way down. So we can start really getting fancy on being able to start seeing, you know, let's just take a look at my orders that were occurring in February. And by the way, we only had 10 and 12 here, but you know what the heck, we'll take a look at that. Now we can very quickly see, again, using some data views of being able to see this information here. Now, if I wanted to be able to keep this and keep this uh, layout so the next time I go into my drill down, I can always do a save as. I can save this layout as a specific layout, and I can save it whether it be the user for a specific user, or I can save it for an entire large group, as I mentioned. So being able to have some real flexibility at this point in my drill downs, and that's just simply drill downs. We also have in the workbenches 
the concepts of navigators. Being able to take a look at the uh, the data in a navigation field or me methodology here in a row column format, giving us things like price and availability, estimates, uh, being able to take a look at this information very quickly. Being able to take a look at then, and I mentioned the, uh, the critical numbers, and we saw on the dashboard just a couple of critical numbers, but we also have a large addition. There's over 100 now critical numbers, and these are based on uh, common business practices, incidents, late orders, uh, average order turnaround days, so really those KPIs that are industry-specific and, and uh, role-specific. Being able to take a look at uh, by a specific customer. So, for example, if we took a look at our critical numbers just for a particular uh, customer, we can start seeing what are things like what are our AR balance. And again, as I demonstrated before, being able to do a single click and being able to pull those up. Now we also have in the uh, just in the home page, we've selected a number of data views that are relevant to a customer service person. So being able to take a look at customer orders, RMAs, projects, being able to again take a look at this data, being able to do exactly what I did before uh, under from the top of the dashboard, being able to take a look at these dashboards, picking our uh, our columns, being able to show the options of uh, being able to uh, uh, do some uh, summations, being able to do uh, selecting, etc. Really being able to have a lot of flexibility here on these data views. So that is just a little bit about what goes on on a home page. So now you're seeing exactly you know, how can a data view be used on a home page for a heads up display. Well now let's go ahead and jump into a little bit more about data views and how we would create a data view perhaps on our own. Very straightforward at this point. So uh, for example here I have created a couple of uh, data views already, and this one happens to be uh, my uh, Godland customer orders. So, for example, my Godland customer orders, in order to do this, I simply selected my intelligent data object, which was the information from the database that I was looking for, uh, being able to uh, set a number of options and capabilities for that it has to do with how many records I'm going to pull from the database uh, when I first uh, open the application up. Uh, being able to link multiple intelligent objects together. So in this particular uh, case here, my customer orders and my customer order items are two different uh, data objects, two different sets of data out of the database, and I'm going to join them at this point by our customer number. So let's go ahead and just quickly set up the, uh, or jump into the IDO, because what I'm going to want to do is start taking a look at, from this particular uh, IDO, what data am I going to select? So these are all of the uh, column names inside of that intelligent data object that I could present in my, re in my data view in my report. So I can select additional information simply by clicking on it. For example, we could take a look at uh, grabbing surcharge information, being able to, uh, being able to uh, have our site name. So being able to grab a lot of additional information, being able to do some ordering, being able to do uh, a number of different uh, activities here, or being able to bring that data together and ultimately being able to present that information in our data view. And as we pull this up, now if you think about this, by being able to use the intelligent data objects, first of all, we, haven't, we have not had to go against uh, the raw SQL tables. We've been able to use this more of a business object style of information that is simple and easy to use. Uh, the intelligent data objects actually took care of joining perhaps multiple tables together out of uh, SQL, so you're not having to worry about complex joins or anything like that. The, all that is done for you through the intelligent data object. So very simply being able to take just a couple of uh, IDOs, joining those together, makes it pretty simple. 
But really what we've been able to take a look at here is being able to see, so for example, my customer number one, being able to take a look at all of the orders for customer number one, and being able to even drill down into the individual lines, so really three levels deep being able to take a look at the summations of how many, uh, in this case, what's my total uh, sales orders, what's my average order, pardon me, my average order value, being able to take a look at all this information very, very quickly in our, in our data view. And being able to start then looking at this and saying, you know, let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and choose our columns. In this case here, we know what columns, I've selected a number of them here, but I could actually say, well, you know, we might as well go ahead and grab the address here. Uh, we want to get the city information here. And uh, so we've been able to add that, all that additional information as well onto the data view and being able to take a look at that information as we see it out here. Now we may also want to say, well, you know, I'd really like to say, I really want to have my customer in this column here, um, you know, I want to have my uh, my customer purchase order because that's important to me, and uh, I want to have my, of course, my customer name. So I can now start seeing that the report really starts to shape up very, very nicely at that point. So being able to have a lot of that flexibility at that point, and being able to really manipulate and move this information exactly the way I want to use it, and of course, I then can go back through and say, you know what, let's go ahead and save this. And we're going to save this for future use. Now, I can always pull this information back up and say, do I want to see the report by customer, by end user type, by customer orders, or use my Warren format that I just created here that I started with. So a little bit about the uh, some data views that are out here and uh, being able to pull that information up as we go. Now, what we want to do too is we want to say, I'm going to pull up another uh, data view here. And uh, this is another data view that uh, I had created here. This is, looks pretty simple here, you know, single line. But there's a lot of power that's behind this one here. And I happen to take a look at our customer order items again. Remember, I went into the IDO setup. Now this one here, I wanted to do some financial analysis. And so I selected a lot of information here that was more financial oriented. For example, my cost of goods sold, uh, what my sell price was, uh, various other financial based information about the cost of the product here. And that's what I've created with this one. So let's go ahead and launch this data view. And we'll see what we have here. So, for example, in this one here, I have my customer, my customer name, my uh, location, uh, what was sold, how many was ordered, how many was shipped, for example. And uh, now you see some columns here. For example, this column to be invoiced. Now, what was interesting is here, if we go back to the data view setup under our IDO, there is no column in here called to be invoiced. This was a custom column that I created just for the report. So it was one, and I'll get to that in just a moment, because I created some additional ones too here at the end. And for interesting information that I like to see is, what's my material percent as a cost of total value? So if I take a look at it, and being able to start seeing for example, on this item here, 33.3% of my total price is material because I have additional labor, I have overhead, I have variable overhead, etc. So being able to take a look at, you know, what's my average percent of sales, or I should say average cost of materials. Now I also took a look at adding, by the way, this is a, this is a custom column as well, calculated column. You won't find that in the database. Now I also have one here called extended labor. And what I did was here is for that particular order, I took a look at my labor cost, multiplied that times my units, and I was able to actually collect then the amount of labor that went into that particular, uh, particular order. 
Now, I did that for a very specific reason. You might want to say, well, you know, why would you want to do that? And the reason why I did something like that is gives you the idea of, you know, these are some real complex calculations that if you had to go into the database and look at, it might take you some time to do it. So let's go ahead and see how we did this here. These are all part of our custom columns. So being able to create custom columns, which are calculated columns just like you would do in Excel. And by the way, the language is very simple. So for example, my to be invoiced column says simply quantity shipped minus quantity invoiced. My total cost, we'll pull that up in the advanced editor, was simply being able to take all these different fields and do some math on them. I can also do date and time, engineering calculations, so very much like you would see in Excel. And by the way, when you start uh, adding information here, for example, we could say, just by typing in cost, it will go up and do a pull-down search of all of my cost information of all the fields that are available. So you really don't have to be any type of programmer. All you have to do is kind of have an idea of what, uh, what information's out there. For example, if we wanted to say, I wanted to add in the word price and say, oh, there's my price extended price, etc. So being able to build these, cal these calculations very, very quickly at this point. Now, my um, material percent of cost, for example, I also had one here, my labor cost. And in this case here, all we did was take in our, uh, our site line cost as labor cost over quantity shipped and uh, got that information accordingly. Very straightforward to adding these, uh, these custom columns. Now, here's where this really comes into play here. Being in Illinois, Illinois has an interesting uh, concept of, of if you're doing business in Illinois, there are certain tax credits that you can get by selling your product um, to another company, for example. Your, your customers, if they are in Illinois, also can claim uh, Illinois-based labor. So, for example, being able to start doing a very quick uh, search on this and being able to say, let me select just my customers that are in Illinois. And being able then to say, how many sales did I have? of what was my lab, total labor value for companies that I sold in Illinois. Extremely easy to do something like this. So really being able to bring this information uh, to you here at this point. So uh, again, being able to start saying, you know, let me see if I can create my custom columns. You know, extremely uh, easy to do. Being able to simply say what collection of, of information, what IDO. Being able to say our new column, and uh, we'll say that's a decimal, and we want to say this is uh, we'll say it's our uh, extended price minus cost. Oh, there's our extended cost. So all we have to do, and very quickly now, we have our new column. And there's our cost minus, or our price, our sale price, extended uh, price minus extended cost. So being able to add that new column very, very quickly. So being able to grab those data views and grab that data extremely quickly, making some complex uh, mathematical calculations. And as I mentioned here, uh, being able to start seeing, uh, going into our advanced editor, being able to take a look at statistical information, for example, average count, max, min, variations. So being able to do a lot of that same thing, the same things you'd be doing in Excel. And it's actually, I find it a little bit easier just to add the columns like this. And of course, being able to now 
maintain uh, the data in harmony with the rest of the organization. So that's a little bit about doing some custom data views, custom, uh, customizing your data views, really making that information work for you. And by the way, if we wanted to just see out of the, out of the uh, call it out of the box, how many data views that you get, because these are used pervasively across the system. So you get quite a few. There happens to be uh, just 78 that are on my system here. And I know many of our customers, as uh, soon as they get the, uh, the application here, you'll find them uh, creating hundreds, literally hundreds, of data views and using these uh, pervasively across their, uh, their application. So with that, Let's just do a quick re recap <clears throat> as we move back in from the live software. We'll go back into PowerPoint. Being able to start saying, let's take a look at the data views and recap this. The fact is we saw live data. And by the way, all of that data was uh, you know, live against the system. So if something was recorded uh, as a sales order coming in, a shipment going out, something on the shop floor happened, all that information is going to be uh, reflected in the data view as soon as you're looking at it. Being able to use the same data that was in the forms. So if you're familiar with the intelligent data objects that are used in forms, you're going to be able to jump right in and create your data views very, very quickly. Uh, easy to understand, single system of truth. Uh, being able to take a look at the flexible and uh, repeatable layouts, being able to save those layouts and save those formats. Being able to do the pivot type analysis, group buys, uh, being able to uh, do your summations, being able to do your selections. Uh, being able to create the custom columns at that point for deeper uh, analysis and personalization. And the fact is that all of this is controlled within the sightline security model, so there's never a, uh, uh, an opportunity to get data into the wrong hands if you set your security model up the correct way. So, Joe, with that, I'm going to turn it back over for some questions. And uh, if we can... Uh, open up and see if we have any questions that may be coming in via chat. Absolutely. Thanks, Warren. Uh, Bill has sent a question. It says, so can data views access third-party SQL databases? <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, you know, it was probably uh, my oversight here. I didn't uh, happen to go into that here, but indeed they can. And uh, for those of you who maybe were on a call last month, I had talked about the, uh, the uh, outriggers, uh, Sightline Mongoose outriggers, and the linked database tables. So, for example, uh, being able to go into IDOs and create your IDOs from linked databases, and uh, in this particular case here, being able to specify a database that is not within the, uh, the Sightline database world. It might be maybe it's an uh, external uh, vendor-managed inventory uh, tool crib maintenance system. Maybe it's an uh, external uh, forecast system. And being able to pull that data in, create an intelligent data object on top of it, and then therefore use that same information into data views, but even more powerful, being able to use that same information to create personalized forms. So uh, you're using that same data across uh, all of Sightline that's come in from, indeed, a third-party system. And by the way, that database is, no, is not just limited to SQL. It can also be an Oracle database. So, for example, some of our clients have uh, perhaps some corporate systems that are uh, not written around the, uh, the Sightline environment. Maybe they're a, a different... Uh, could be a different different business system out there uh, that's written on Oracle. Not a problem being able to pull that information in accordingly. Thank you, Bill, for that good question. Sorry I didn't uh, pop that information in there earlier uh, as well. Cause very, very important there. Uh, Linda's asking uh, what happens during an upgrade, uh, whether their data views would be preserved Indeed, they are, and uh, this is since since the data views are written in the Mongoose uh, technology, in the same underlying uh, uh, ERP, uh, or I should say, the same uh, technology built upon uh, the extensions of .NET, the uh, which is what what Sightline runs. So uh, they're they're built on the same same methodology. So yes, indeed, uh, as you take your upgrades, uh, the same thing of any uh, form modifications that you would do within Sightline. All of your work is preserved 
as you take those maintenance upgrades that are uh, available under your maintenance contract. So it makes it very easy to uh, preserve what you have, take the new upgrades, and uh, grow, grow even more uh, because you've got the best of both worlds, uh, what Infor provides plus what, uh, what you've done on your own. Yes? Okay. Uh, for now, we have one more. Don is asking how the Workbench suite and data views are licensed, and I can go ahead and address that one. Um, the Workbench suite is a site-based license, so if you're a SiteLine customer that has one SiteLine database uh, and you, and you uh, get a uh, Workbench suite license, every one of your users would have access to that, um, whereas if you're a multi-site uh, SiteLine uh, customer, then you would need a site license for each of the sites where Workbench suite would be needed. Mm -hmm. So if you have two, uh, you know, again, two databases, and everyone needs it, then you need to get two site licenses. So uh, regardless if you have five users or 100 in each database, everyone would have it once you apply that site license. Yeah, and uh, Joe, you know, to, to touch on uh, this a little bit more is because uh, what we find is once our, our clients that we've, uh, that uh, buy into uh, the data views of workbenches, they start liking it so much that everybody wants to use it. And uh, so it really becomes extremely powerful to be able to have that information, that same system of record with same, uh, same uh, capabilities across all the, all the relevant users there. Excellent. Well, again, Warren, thank you for, uh, for a great presentation. I'm sure very helpful information to our, uh, our customers. And uh, I'd like to invite any, anyone who did not uh, get a chance to pop their question in or, you know, you think of a question after we sign off here, please go ahead and send that to us uh, to this email address, info at godlin, I-N-F-O at godlin, G-O-D-L-A-N dot com. Uh, I'll be glad to uh, route that to Warren or whoever needs to answer that for you, get that answer right back to you. And uh, y if you'd like to request a copy of this presentation, you can also let us know that through that same email, and we'll get that right back to you uh, as soon as it's created, which is uh, usually pretty quickly. Thank you so much for joining us, and I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you all next time.